Now in this lecture we will plot DSBSC signal and SSB signal using Scilab software here. So these are my learning outcomes. At end of this session students will be able to plot DSBSC signal and SSB signal using Scilab software here. So before starting to this session just recall so what were the basic commands used to close and clear the screen or the memory locations in the Scilab here. Okay. So what is in Scilab that we have seen in the previous video that is an open source and freely distributed source here and which was developed in 1990 here. So the Scilab main features why we are going to make use of these things it is due to the dedicated editors and which can be used on all operating system like Linux, Windows and Mac operating system here. Okay. So now we'll have the practical session uh, means we'll implement the two signals on the Scilab software here. Okay. So now I'm going to switch over uh, the Scilab software here. Okay. So in the previous lecture what we have seen if you want to browse or you if you want to take the file from uh, the system you can browse through this window. These are the variable browsers and this is the command history here. So there is an editor called here. So you can launch Sci notes here. Okay. So open a file, copy, paste, all these things are there in this folder like this. Okay. So now I'm going to open the editor window here. Okay. So these are the things we need to understand that is CLC clear and close what we have seen in the previous year. FS that is the sampling frequency and the T that is from 0 to T and 1 by FS here. So how much we are going to do the sampling of a signal that is the time period from 0 to 3 in that we are going to do the sample of 1 by FS that is we have taken 100 here. So as we know seen that we have taken the input from the user that is FM, FC and AM and AC that are the message signal and the, the amplitude of the message signal and the carrier signal here because to calculate an M that is the modulation index as well as the uh, message signals frequency we require this here. Okay. So uh, as we have seen that is the message signal that is AM cos 2 pi sin FM into T here. So this is the message signal you are going to plot here uh, that will be the figure 1. In that you are going to have the subplot here that is 3 comma 1 comma 1 plot T comma message here. So the plot will be T that is the total time period with respect to message that signal is going to be plotted here that's why it is taken as an T here. X level is going to have the time because X level will uh, will be the time and Y level will be an amplitude and the title for that signal will be a message signal. So all these details will be there about the message signal here. Same way if you are going to plot the carrier signal that is the AC we are going to take the amplitude of a carrier signal what we have taken the input from the user that is cos 2 pi that is into FC into T okay then subplot 3 comma 1 comma 2 that will be the second uh, plotting of that diagram plot T comma carrier here in this uh, message signal we used to take the message here so now it will be carrier because the variable for the plotting of a carrier signal is in this X label will be same time and Y label will be the an amplitude and title will be the carrier signal here okay and DSBSC modulation will be the message into carrier signal okay so this is the signal here and subplot here now if you observe okay if you observe this so what we have seen uh, in the things uh, that is your AM signal will be of that is the carrier plus LSB and plus USB means what this will be VC sine omega CT plus will be M VC by 2 cos of omega CT plus omega M of T minus M VC by 2 that will be cos omega C minus omega M of T here okay so this was the total AM signal in DSBC signal because to save the power because one third of power is required to transmit this carrier signal is going to be cut down here and we are going to have only two sidebands that is MVC by cos and uh, this is uh, USB 
and this is an lsb here okay so we are going to implement this here so now we will see the output how it is going to uh, look okay so if you are going to run this then we have to come out the the console window here enter the message signal here so last time we have taken directly from the uh, in the editor now we are going to take enter the message signal i'm going to take two hertz okay enter the carrier signal that will be uh, i'm going to take 20 and enter the message signals amplitude that will be one i'm going to take one volts and enter the carrier signal that will be often we are going to take two so see here all the command histories are being rec recorded here okay so now i'm going to put two so if we'll start executing so it will look like this here so the now the difference between this am signal and the uh, ds basic signal is that there will be, will be then phase shift of the signal here because see here it is then phase shift here every time it is going to be phase shifted here due to the uh, demodulator so we are going to make use of the principle of a balance modulator here uh, balance modulator is what whenever the two frequencies are going to be passed through the non linear resistance here so you will be getting a carrier suppressed here here the carrier is going to be suppressed here that's why you are going to have the phase shift here now we'll see once again so if you write here sign so what happens here am sign and this is also the sign what we are going to do okay so we are going to execute here first we need to save this file save and then we are going to execute here okay so once again we are going to take this 2 20 1 and 2 here okay see now see the difference here so it is being started from 0 sign 0 it will be starting from here the co cosine term will be starting from minus 1 here and this is the time period so 0 to 3 here okay and what we have taking the samples that is uh, fs is equals to 100 we have taken 1 by fs we are going we have made here the same signal will be there here see here phase shift here it is here it is here 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 so there is a phase shift of the signal here okay so this is implementation of an the dsbse signal so this is the time carrier message signal and the title for this 3 comma 1 comma 1 means this is the subplot here 1 3 comma 1 comma 2 means this will be the second and this will be the third here okay in the same manner if you see uh, for the ssb signal so we are going to see the ssb signal also the same thing is required here so that's why we are going to do in this manner that is clc clear and all so now i have not done any cleared here not clc i have done but whenever i am going to run this program it will do the same thing here okay so now we are going to see that also by running this program so we have taken the input from the users that is the frequencies and amplitude the cosine uh, message signal and carrier signal and this is for the hilbert transform is used to implement the ssb signals here okay the subplot and all this thing here so that we are going to see See, it is automatically cleared because what we have written in the program first CLC and then clear and then all the uh, close whatever the documents are being here. Okay. So now in the same manner, enter the message signal frequency 2. I am going to insert the 2 here. Okay. So enter the carrier signal frequency. It will be uh, 20. So enter the message signal 2 and the enter the carrier signal amplitude. I am going to take a take it as an 3 here okay so if you enter this okay so this is the spectrum these are the two things are plotted here the first one is your ssb signal here so this is your message signal this is your carrier signal and this is one more message signal and this is the second message signal okay so in the hilbert transform what we have done we have taken the three message signal here and what we have plotted so we have plotted the signal spectrum also here the ssb modulated signal lsb and usb so it will look like here so now if you observe the things uh, in this video so dsbsc signal will be look different here because the carrier is absent here in ssb one carrier is absent as well as the one sideband is absent here now this is the ssb signal spectrum that is lsb and 
the USB spectrum is going to be there here. Okay, so uh, in this manner, we need to install all the uh, softwares and run, and we can observe the output on the Scilab here, which is very good alternative to MATLAB here. Okay, so uh, now what we are going to do? So we can stop here. So these are my references. These are the communication system and analog and digital by Sanjay Sharma and analog and digital communication by TL Singhal here. Okay. So thank you.